Toot. Hi, everybody. I'm Jason Inman. And I'm Ashley Victoria <laughs> Robinson. And we're here to review tonight's episode of Arrow, Arrow Season 6, Episode 14, Collision Course. And if you haven't seen this episode, you might want to come back later because there will be spoilers. Oliver, Diggle, and Felicity disagree with Dinah, Curtis, and Renee on how to handle Black Siren. The two teams face off and a fight ensues. Yes. Now, uh, of course, this is our very first attempt at doing an Arrow live stream. We have uh, no idea if we're actually even live <laughs> or if anybody is even watching right now. There's two people watching. So if you are currently watching live right now and you are live, uh, uh, please be an awesome friend and let us know how well we sound and how, how well we look and everything like that just so we can know that uh, everything is okay because, again, we can see it on our screen and who the hell knows otherwise. But your All right. Look like uh, let's go through this, Ashley. Okay. So the episode starts off with a city council meeting, of course, where um, we are dealing with the ramifications that Caden James just died at the end of the last episode. Mm -hmm. um, now, the thing that I didn't realize from the very last episode is that Caden was going to give the funds back, and we can't get the funds back if Caden's dead. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, you know, Oliver's like, we're going to, we have 48 hours. We're going to do this. The funds will come back. And I appreciate it because these are the type of scenes that I think Arrow really pulls off well. When we pull Oliver and his crew into a corner, and then we're watching the entire episode to see how they escape out of that. Mm -hmm. um, also, I really like any Mayor Queen scene. What did you think about this opening? Um, I thought this opening was interesting. I always think it's interesting when we start with Oliver and Star City as opposed to any specific Arrow mm -hmm. stuff. I like when we can run a parallel sort of A-B narrative, like the real world uh, mirrors what's going on in the metahuman superheroic mm -hmm. world. Um, I thought Thea was wearing the best outfit she's worn in the really? entire history. In the very beginning? I thought, yes. Okay. Uh, where she had like a black top and like high pants. Like the whole time I was like, Thea looks great. I'm so happy Thea's back. <laughs> and then later on I regretted being happy that Thea was back. Um, but uh, Willa Holland looked smashing in yeah. the beginning. <laughs> um, we then get an accountant, of course, that's going to bring back the, the money back from Corto Maltese, which of course is a reference to The Dark Knight Returns. Corto Maltese is the place where the nuclear bombs drop and Superman almost dies. It's also where Thea uh, went and trained. Uh, with Malcolm Merlin. Uh, yeah. She was on a tropical island paradise. We have seen it, yeah. When, uh, when he, there's an episode called Culture Motis in mm -hmm. season three. Three. Um, when he first walked in, I legitimately thought it was Gary from Legends of Tomorrow. That's, ex from a distance. That's exactly what I was going to bring up. Ah, well done. Uh, I was literally going to be like, he looks exactly like Gary. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> um, so we find out that the account, of course, has been withdrawn. Of course, mm. the villains are not going to let that money stay there. No. Um, and then we, in the very next scene, we find William and Felicity making cookies because we find that the schools are shutting down because um, there's no money. Are we assuming that William goes to a public school? Like, this is the United States. Well, a rich kid who comes from a, a, a legacy family with privilege, wouldn't he go to a? But here's the thing: private school. You forgot. Oliver's no longer rich. I he, mean, he lost his fortune in season three. But Felicity's rich. And yes. I mean, look at the place where they yeah, live. Yeah. Like Oliver is doing just sure, sure. fine. Felicity is rich. Oliver is not. That's true. I want to. I want to also really sure. quick um, call back to the previous scene with the accountant because Dinah shows up. Uh, she kind of inserts herself into that mm -hmm. scene, and they have a little tense moment at the end. And I actually thought it was a really great scene for the two of them. Yeah. And I enjoy their interactions. And kind of like the, it just integrates from there. So. Oh, interesting. <laughs> uh, so, so apparently people are saying the chat is disabled. I just enabled the chat, guys, so you yeah. should be back in. My bad. Everybody watching live, you should be able to chat now. Uh, um, so please go ahead and, and, and get in there. I'll this is label. There, I'll put this over there. Uh, um, so there you go. Uh, hopefully it's 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 live and live again. So please let us know down in the comments. Um, so um, we get the scene where we find out that Black Siren has stolen the money. That she withdrew mm -hmm. the money, which again, I thought that was going to be a twist because, of course, we saw in last episode, Black Siren had been taken by Lance. Yeah. I thought we were going to find out that it was actually uh, Richard Diaz and not Dinah. So uh, I would have uh, rather, or that, assume, not Laurel. Excuse I would have rather that had been the case. Yeah, um, you know, then we get the thing where uh, Lance lies a little bit to uh, um, Oliver. He goes, "Yeah, yeah, we can do that." Laurel started following me, Oliver. You don't know this. But Laura was sending me all kinds of uh, uh, Instagram messages. And uh, she asked me to join. Laura asked me to join Vera. Uh. Laurel asked me to join Vero. Uh. 
That, that's how I know she's good. Ah, that's um, how I all Laurel so all let's time. talk about this. We've been talking. We've seen this for several episodes mm-hmm. now. It's kind of been the main thrust of Lance, and we can skip ahead a little bit on this. Um, I have not enjoyed this Lance wanting to go after Dinah's story. Or excuse me, I keep calling her Dinah. They're Black Canaries. Laurel storyline. Yeah. Black Simon is what I should you call her. You remember Laurel because it is mm-hmm. the lesser mm-hmm. Black Canary. Um, I, you know, it's a bummer because Paul Blackthorne is such a tremendous actor Mm -hmm. and he takes this garbage storyline and these horrible lies Mm -hmm. because he's acting counter to Lance. Lance is is an emotional character, but he is very logical and methodical. That's why he was a good um, police officer Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And to see him just acting so wildly inconsistent it's heartbreaking because this character and this actor deserves better. And why you gotta put creepy child Thea in the? We'll get to that. No, no, say that. Say that. Say that. <laughs> Don't. No, 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 no. Don't put that in there yet. Uh, 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 um. So I wanna, I wanna put out there, Ashley. I wanna put this out okay. there. What do you think about the fact that Lance has a daughter out there? We see Sarah every single week on Legends of Tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, this. I had this thought. This Lance acts like a Lance. That has no living daughters. This this guy acts like, you know, uh, uh, um, season. Well, I don't know. I don't understand his grief when he has a living daughter out there. I mean, I also don't. Or why he's going this? Why he's bending this far backwards for Laurel? Uh, because she has to be in this season, and we're contractually obligated to keep her yes, on the show. I, I know, guess. I know. Um, it is, and it it's sort of denigrating to Sarah's character and to their relationship as well. Mm-hmm. Particularly when the thrust of the first season of Arrow, and then into the second season, was like, do we tell him that Sarah's still alive? Yeah. And it really makes. It kind of makes him seem like a bad dad, and I mean, it was... Kind of ob- makes him seem like an idiot. It was obvious from the beginning that Laurel was the favorite, but you're like, man, could you be, like, a little less obvious with <laughs> your like favoritism of your daughters? You, Sarah, I love you, but uh, Laurel sent me to Vero. Invite. <laughs> Sarah's sitting there, she's like, I'm prettier, I've had more functional relationships, uh, and I'm a better fighter, so I don't know what you want me to do. Why don't you love me? Baby like- girl, baby girl. <laughs> You don't look like your. Why don't you love? You don't look like your mama. I'm sorry. You didn't get plastic. Drain me to drinking. You didn't get like a huge amount of plastic <laughs> surgery between season one and season two, so I can't be on board with you. Ah. Uh. Um. All right. So, so of course, Lance is keeping Black Siren in this cabin, mm-hmm. and we see the creeper scene where where. Uh, let's see if anybody out there gets this reference. Where where Thea does an Arrow season four reference to Oliver. There's a scene <laughs> in the fake city. Uh, um, in the fake city where uh, um. Oliver is like walking through the houses and he sort of peers in the window <laughs> and like and like storms out of his family and Thea I thought was reminding me of her brother. It's funny because I at first I didn't realize that it was Thea. I literally thought yeah. it was like a creepy child. Yeah. Like yeah. it happened like a and horror I was like, movie. Yeah, like what are we watching? Cuz I'm cuz I'm convinced it wasn't her. I'm convinced it was a CG shot. Yeah. Uh that was superimposed over mm-hmm. like a, a green screen mm-hmm. window. Josh Zoll by the way, uh graciously donated to the Arrow live chat. Thank, thank you so you, much Josh Zoll and, and, and thank you everybody. By the way, thank you everybody joining this live right now. Uh and we know it's very late. Um okay, so we get this really badass moment mm-hmm. where Green Arrow comes into the other team. Let's call them. You want? Can we call them the ter- 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 the Terrifics? Oh, I always call them the recruits. Well, let's call them the Terrifics team because okay. you know it seems like Mr. Terrific <laughs> Why is. Why did leading. you ask me? <laughs> I, because Ashley, you have an inside pulse at CW, and I know that that if I say it to you, it'll go all the way to the top. But you know what? If they put a if they put Phantom Girl on their team, I'd be impressed. Sure. Um. So Green Arrow comes in. Is like, where is Black Siren? Yeah. Um. And then Renee comes up to Oliver where. Where was the Green Arrow when Vincent died? Now, this started a trend, in my opinion. This episode, at many points, had atrocious lines of dialogue. There is a line in this episode where Renee, earlier earlier in the scene, looks at the tire tracks and goes, Man, if we track the tire tracks... We'll figure out where they are. And I literally screamed, no, duh, Renee. I wrote, I in my notes, I wrote, shut up, Renee, <laughs> like three times. Yeah. And then I followed it up with shut up, Felicity, and shut up, Thea. Yeah. So, the, 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 just, mm-hmm. also, 
I can't believe that these, like, Renee and Curtis harp on the Vince thing repeatedly. Yes. Neither of them had a relationship with him. Nobody really liked Vince. So I can understand that you're trying to be here for Dinah. Yeah. She's your teammate. And Vince was a bad guy. Vince was a bad guy. He was a bad guy. Awful. Um, Awful. I want a quick shout out to the everybody. Uh, Hector Zeroni, thank you so much for the super chat, who says our shelf looks so big from this angle. Yep, that's right. because that's, that's force perspective. That's the set that we usually, we. Uh, <laughs> this is the computer that I usually edit everything on. All right, so I want to ask you this question, Ashley. Yes. Is the terrific team really acting way out of character. Now let me finish my thoughts here because Renee they're 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 fending a really bad dude. Mm -hmm. Renee calls Arrow a thug. Um and I really think that they're pushing the characteristics of all these characters just so we can have the fight in this episode. Oh, because a thousand percent. I'm on Team Arrow's side all the way. Yeah, and I mean... And I keep yelling at the recruits. Uh, I mean, I, I have made my distaste for Renee evident across this season and last. Um, mm -hmm. There's this there's this point where Oliver has him and he has an arrow against his throat and I was like, can you just just kill him? Like, put mm -hmm. me out of my misery. He's... He, they, he's, they've, they've taken these recruits and they were in a good place and now they've swung them back to the ridiculous place that they started. They were great last season. Yes, and it's, again, like... For the sake of a fight that's not even that well mm -hmm. choreographed. And to be honest with you, they I even think that they, at a point, redeemed Renee. Like, they worked mm -hmm. Renee past all his crap. They did. And, and now, now we're back just... And now we're back into him just being a complete and then, ass. And then what they go on to do to Diggle um, later oh, well, on in yeah, this yeah. episode is just, like, ethically horrible. And then Curtis <laughs> has this lovely speech after that. And you're like, but you're not practicing... Okay. Yeah. So the two teams did to have a giant chase scene in cargo vans, which would be quite impossible. Mm -hmm. um, they chase each other around. Dinah steps on a perfectly good wiretap. Um, and Curtis doesn't freak yep. out that they ruined it. We get another bad line of dialogue where Renee goes, they tossed away our bug like, like a, a bug. bug. I, there was just, I'm sorry, I wrote them all down. And then Curtis Holt does a move that I think... Man, I'm a I love Echo Kellum and mm -hmm. I really like the character of Curtis. So do I. I think this was a step too far when he hacks John Diggle's arm simply to track them. To me that's a super low blow. And at this point when they pulled that move, I literally said to myself, I hope Oliver benches all of them, and I hope not a single one of them is in season seven. Absolutely. I don't want any of them in season seven now. But also, I think, and you said that you thought at one point they were going to do the same thing to Felicity. Yes. Um, I don't know what is worse. I, yeah, I thought they were going to. I thought they were. Excuse, I thought they were going to turn off her chip that makes her walk. Yeah, you have this yeah. team, and I said I, they would never do it to Felicity because they bend mm -hmm. over backwards to show us how great she is. But when you have, um, when you have this, you have this triangle of people. And I just, I just, it's such a bad, like you take out the heart, you take out one of the best characters who you were just in such a support role. Like it's just so insulting and it's so insulting to do it to John of mm -hmm. all the characters you could have, you could have done, done it to. And for me, regardless of any of their other ridiculous behavior, that's the point of no return. Yeah. So yeah, um, but they did have a really, really good scene where Oliver and Diggle get the best scene of the episode, where uh, um, they're talking about the right decisions. We and get they, a Daddy Diggle speech. We do get a Daddy Diggle speech. We also get a Brother Diggle speech, where Diggle is very much like, "Look, Oliver, I'll follow you to the right call mm -hmm. all the way." Um, you know, so he was like, "Would we be doing this?" Mm -hmm if it wasn't Laurel. And then Arrow says, would you be having any problems with this if it was anybody but those three? Which I actually thought was exactly... We talked about this a little bit earlier in our This Week's Flash review where mm -hmm. we talked about how the episode really should have been about Barry pushing the team, trying to speed up things and, and not figuring out that, hey, you went to jail for two months, things are going to be weird. <laughs> yeah. This scene to me kind of came off as what really the episode should have been about. The idea of... Is it right to treat these people that we brought into our home, that we trained, as complete enemies? But I, I really agree with the argument about Laurel. Mm -hmm. And Thea has this dumb speech at the end where she's like, she's like your Laurel in the most important way. She's her daddy's daughter. And it's like, she's, Is that your Thea impression? That's my all-annoying girls impression. <laughs> um, and it's like, no, she's not. 
First of all, the original Laurel was yep. a terrible character. Yes. This Laurel is a terrible character who's evil. And, and, and I don't yeah. understand why just because you used to sleep with her, she gets a pass. Well, like he never slept with Dinah, so she doesn't get the same pass. Well, sure. Um, I will say, and original Laurel's death actually meant something to the show. It it did, yeah. and, yeah, and yeah. I think it's being muddied by this thing that they're getting mm -hmm. into now. Uh, also, also um, I really liked in the ridiculous driving scene that you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, we got a callback to Diggle being like, I'm gonna drive like you hired me to do six years ago. Oh, that was I, a nice little joke. I thought that was like a really nice, a really nice little one line that, right that there. Was, that was a nice, nice little joke. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the teams, of course, they fight. Mm -hmm. um, this is a hell of, especially Arrow, Arrow pulls a Breaking Bad, uh, um, your goddamn right moment, like Walter Wright moment, where he's like, take not one more step. And of course, it's Renee that takes the step. Um, I really like the idea of Oliver shooting at the T-Spheres. Um, I like the idea. But then Renee starts shooting blindly and shoots Felicity. Yeah. Um, and then at one point, Renee grabs an axe and starts swinging wildly at Oliver. And to be honest with you... I know that they were going for... Uh, they were trying to do a cool found object moment. Yeah. Is what the fight choreographers well, were doing. Well, also, I understand the idea that you, you, this the entire episode, the drama has been building. We've been mm -hmm. moving towards this fight. This whole episode, I think this whole arc has been set up so that we can have a fight, right? Yeah. And I know it's really terrible that Renee goes to the hospital at the end. But I was disappointed he didn't die. Well, I'd be lying if I wasn't cheering when Oliver beat the holy hell out of him. <laughs> yeah. I actually was cheering. I was like, yeah, Oliver, karma's a bitch, isn't it, Renee? Yeah, um, yeah I mean. But I don't know. Like, uh, there were, all, again, it was the idea that they kept pushing the team acting so much out of character. Yeah, and, and they... They have this big argument that runs through this about what is justice. Mm -hmm. And I understand that in superhero storytelling, that's a big theme, especially yeah. in the DC universe. Yeah. We have literally the Justice League. Yeah. But especially in Arrow and the Arrow niche that you've carved out, like you're so anti the idea mm -hmm. of justice, the way that you operate. I just thought it was a weird word that they kept throwing around mm -hmm. that felt antithetical to the show and the mission of these characters in the show. Yeah, and then we get very quickly at the very end, we get uh, Curtis finally waking up and being like, you can't kill anybody. Mm -hmm. Then we get Lance finally being like, that was a good speech I, for Curtis. I screwed up. I screwed up, Thea. I screwed up. Uh, and to which Thea says no. And I was like, yep. yes, yes, you yep. did. And, yes. And then we get Dinah being like, you were right, Curtis. I, I was a crazy murderer for four episodes, which again, because we spent the whole episode making these characters act so much out of character that, um, that um, we had to really truncate this. Mm -hmm. what, all three of these scenes are powerful, meaning, uh, meaty scenes, and I kind of felt that they we had to we had to move on because the episode was over. Right. We it would have been more interesting if if we had to do the stupid fight if mm. we'd done the fight in the first act and then we'd spent the rest. I would, of I would say act three, maybe in the middle. Um, sure, and then yeah. we'd spent the rest of the time figuring our stuff out and maybe even trying to come back together and yeah. realizing how these three balance out these because that's mm -hmm. what's going to happen. They're going to be reunited by the series end or the yeah. season's end. Um. And and to to not waste, but to pass over these moments as quickly as they did, undercut yeah. some of the best parts of this episode. Well, I'm going to ask you. There are two moments. Uh, um, well, there's one thing first. Curtis tells uh, Diggle and Felicity to leave. He says, "Go away. They're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. They're checking on Renee." And Curtis is like, "We're done with you all around." Curtis had a um, sweet jacket, though. How? What are, what are the odds you think that the um, these characters are done next season? Oh, uh, I, I, I don't think any of them leave. Except for maybe Renee. I think Renee might be done. No, I think I think Curtis is definitely in it for the long haul. Mm -hmm. I think with Dinah, it depends on whether or not um, Katie Cassidy is out of actor jail and she gets to come back. And if they want to oh. bring Black Canary back. Black, Black Siren, Black Canary. Or, yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I think otherwise, you need, per the formula of the show, we need a female vigilante, and she's the only one we've got right now. Yes, agreed. So I think she's pretty safe. Mm -hmm. I would love to see Renee go. That'd be awesome. And then we come towards the end of the episode, we come into Oliver going into the city council room, his meeting right mm -hmm. outside of his mayor's office, and he sits down, and he's like, I don't have the money. I have failed this City, which it was a good I moment. I was like, this is a really, 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 really good moment, which I I I quite quite enjoyed. Okay, let's go straight into our rating based on a scale of one to five arrowheads that we're not going to show on screen. Ugh. Ashley, what would you give Collision Course 
Arrow. Uh, I think Collision Course is a really bad episode. Um, what? You do? What? I might shock you to learn. <laughs> uh, mostly because Felicity, I guess, gets to go into the field all the, all the damn time now. I'm so, I will, I love Arrow. I will never forgive the creators of Arrow from making, taking her from being the best character on the show to one of the worst characters Felicity. on the show. Felicity. Yes. specifically. Okay. Um, this season of Arrow has been really good on the whole. This episode is an idea that someone obviously pitched in the writer's room, and we decided we sure. were going to build an episode around this idea. Um, and it's not great, because it's not true to any of these characters, and yeah. it really makes you want half the cast to drop. Now, I do think there's a lot of characters on the show, but I don't want them to go out this way. And I don't want this for Diggle, and I don't want this for Curtis especially. Mm -hmm. um, so, because we kind of got three okay scenes at the end, I'll give it a two. It's not the yep. worst episode of Arrow, but it's definitely not a good one. How about you? Really quick before I get to my rating, a superhero fan in the chat uh, said, both of you are great, my favorite YouTubers. Thank you so much, oh, superhero thank fan. You. Thank you for being around on this very late live stream. Um... Okay, this episode did have some moments of great Arrow episodes. Like I said, Arrow does really strong when they are backed into a corner and the mountain seems impossible to climb. And the reason why we love Arrow and the reason why we watch the show and the reason why the show has survived mm -hmm. is because we really enjoy watching Oliver Queen pull off the impossible. Yes. Now the thing is, is that he didn't a pull. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't a pull. He didn't. <laughs> he, he didn't pull this off in this episode. Um, and I thought there were some really bad lines of dialogue, mm -hmm. and they made the Terrifics team act so much out of character that it really hurt the episode. I kind of have to agree with you. I'm going to split the difference because we don't show things on screen. I'm going to give this a two point five. Ooh. It's not a great episode, but it's it's not terrible. All right, let's go straight into our predictions. Ashley, yeah. what do you have for a prediction coming on Arrow? So, I think it was really interesting that we decided to disable the chip in Diggle's arm. And I think that we didn't see Felicity disabled because I think that that's something that we're going to be saving for later on. I don't think you tease us with that and not pay it off by having Felicity crumble because that's theoretically a more impactful thing to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're going to, however we're going to spin out the rest of the Caden James cabal, one of them is going to hack her at some point. Oh, okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You know what I think is also interesting about your prediction is uh, uh, Med6814. Thank you so much. I look forward to you guys. Thank you oh, so thank much. thank you. Uh, uh, Jordan Wilson, a Fenway hey! Patreon. Thanks for streaming at a good mother thing. So thank you so much. Uh, by the way, I'm loving all the all the guys, all your feed in the live chat. So I, also, I love seeing you I want to say that I wish we'd planned for Greenwich Mean Time, but it's really just a nice coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my prediction, as I was saying, it's mm -hmm. very interesting that you picked the chips mm -hmm. because my prediction's about the chips as well. Ooh! Now I want potato chips. I, mm, uh, I <laughs> send us potato chips. I, ag I agree with you. I don't think you bring up these chips, especially since they were supposed to be the idea behind their their startup company. Yeah. I don't believe you bring these up by accident. I think um, that the chips are going to have something to do with the end game of this season of Arrow. Now my prediction is that. We are going to get some sort of alliance again between Curtis and Felicity. Mm -hmm. They are going to figure out how to get the chips working. They're going to sell it off to some company mm -hmm. and the profits make Star City solvent. Interesting. That's So I think Felicity and Curtis with the chips make... That's interesting. Save the city. Because they've done something like that when Felicity took over Queen Industries. Yes. Uh, yeah, yes. Um, so and they, then it became Palmer Tech. Right. Yeah. They kind of have Felicity come in, mm -hmm. save the day, and then a season later she ruins it again. Yeah. Because uh, they have winded up lost. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you so much, all everybody, for watching in the live stream. Don't forget to go down into the comments after you watch this video, if you're watching it now or in the future, and let us know what you thought about the episode. And while you're down there, please click subscribe. And if you want more cool, exclusive, geeky content, or you want to be like Jordi and Wilson and be part of our hall of just this, why not head over to patreon.com slash Joan. Yeah, that's right. We'll see you for more reviews, uh, especially we have some Legends of Tomorrow next week and some Flash, so stick around the channel and we'll see you around. Bye! Bye.